how do you as a leader get both, um, uh, how do you brook dissent in the sense that you want people to disagree with you, argue with you, or challenge you, uh, versus making sure that you've got, at the end of the day, um, uh, obedience, if for lack sure. of a better term. How do you balance those two things? So, so before I hit consent, uh, it's probably important for how do you build consensus. Yeah. And uh, you know, I've 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 had two transitions, two major transitions in a year. Didn't mean to didn't mean to do that, but I had my last job for about 11 months. So I came into that job uh, with with an idea of being there for four years, and uh, and probably like you all did when you when you assumed your responsibilities. I crafted what I thought was the way ahead for the organization. And in my case, a four-year vision for where I wanted to take the organization during the time that I would have those responsibilities. But I very consciously, not knowing I was going to leave the organization, I very consciously issued my initial guidance uh, verbally. In other words, I got all the leadership together uh, about the third day that I was in the job. We brought them all to Quantico, Virginia from all around the world. I got them all together. And, and we spent about three days together uh, and really talking about where the organization needed to go. And then I said, look, I, I, want, I want all of you within the next six weeks to come back to me on one page. And we had about 100. This was a, kind of the top tier of, of both uh, senior executives and, and military leaders. I said, I want you to come back and give me one page on what you think I just said. You know, first of all, give me a comment on, on whether or not uh, you agree with what we're doing. What didn't I say that we should have said? What are the areas that we actually need to clarify, eliminate some of the ambiguity? They came back, and it was only then, uh, 75 days after I took the job, where I actually published that guidance. Well, I feel like that process ensured that every single individual in the leadership team at that point, and I told them, I said, look, once you buy into this, your opportunity to, to have dissent is on the front end here. And once you buy into this vision, then we need to close ranks and then execute the vision because a plan that may not be perfect violently executed is better than, than spending the next several months trying to develop a perfect plan. So your opportunity to, to provide input is up front, and then after that, we need to kind of execute. But then also, obviously, you're going to make course and speed corrections. You don't want rigidity in the plan. And, uh, and I, don't think there's a, I don't think there's a very complicated way to, uh, to talk about dissent, and that is to be approachable. And, uh, you know, I mean, number one, I think how you, how you receive bad news uh, as, a, as a leader is pretty important. And, uh, and if you receive bad news well, you'll continue to get bad news, and you'll continue to get uh, the information that you need inside the organization. If you receive bad news poorly, and the messenger ends up with an arrow through the, you know, what I call the brain housing group, well, then you're probably not going to get, uh, you know, that, that kind of information a second time. So in my mind, uh, it's all about command climate. It's all about, you know, you're leading with positive persuasion and, and you're approachable. And frankly, uh, sometimes, and I've done this, and I'm sure many of the folks in the room have done it, if somebody has an idea that I think is about 80% as good as mine, and, and at the end of the day it doesn't really matter, I'll take the 80% idea just so that person then has a stake in what we're doing and so that the message is sent out that, hey, actually, if, 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 uh, if I make a contribution, Someone's likely to listen to it, and it's actually going to help affect. They've got the they got ownership of the idea. They get ownership of the idea, and that's that was my point about the initial vision. In any event, by the way, for me, in terms of, and we all should be thinking about, I think transition and secession planning. Uh, as it turned out, one of the individuals I leaned on the most to craft my what we called, you know, kind of planning guidance uh, when I first came into my last job, the individual who ended up in the event taking my job 11 months later was one of the primary architects of the vision that, that uh, we had put together in the fall of 2014. So from an institutional perspective, I think that process also helped the institution provided some kind of continuity and predictability for the force, which in my mind, that's another thing that, that a leader provides is, is, uh, is predictability.